the chat if you can hear me. I want to see if there's a delay. Do it as quickly as you can, please. Just put a one in the chat. Okay. So it seems like it's pretty much synced up. It said, where did you get your shirt from? Actually, I have no idea. My wife ordered it for me. And I was like, well, it's a pretty cool shirt. So I wear it. <laughs> Came with a matching hat, too. I'm not sure. Probably somewhere on here. TikTok. <laughs> Something. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Can we get the likes up? Let's get to 1K likes before we get started. And we'll get started shortly. Let's begin with prayer. I know that this is going to bless somebody. Somebody will be blessed by this. Hallelujah. So if you can, please, just tap the screen for me. We have 10 people on right now. Tap the screen 100 times for me, please. If everyone does that, we'll get to 1K. Father Lord, I praise and I bless your holy name. Lord, forgive us, O oh Lord, for anything we may have done to offend you, Father. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would cleanse us in the inward man, that you would sanctify us therein, and that you would cleanse the outward as well. Lord, you have saved us, O oh Lord, and you desire us to be your disciples, that, Lord, we walk after you closely, and that we would go through this process of inward sanctification. Father, I thank you for your teaching and your word, which cleanses. Lord, I thank you, God, for your life, because you are the Word. Lord, you are the flesh fulfillment of the Word of God. You are the complete Word. And Lord, because of your life, we have motion in our life. Because you didn't transgress against God, we also can have life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we are weak by ourselves. Lord, we're not strong by ourselves. Lord, we're not perfect by ourselves. But Lord, you perfect us. Lord, you peace in everything that we need. And I thank you for it, God. You become that factor, Lord. You become the extra that we need. And that extra becomes everything, Lord. Lord, when we were first saved, Lord, you were a small portion of our life. And Lord, as we continue to walk with you, and as we continue to walk, you become more and more and more in our life. As the scripture says that you consume our life, you start off as the smallest seed, and then you turn into the biggest tree. Lord, we've come to know that it's all about you. So Lord, have your way, and let your speech be with us, God. Lord, thank you for your presence. Thank you for your word and your power. And thank you for joy and peace. Thank you for the comforter of the Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray that you would give comfort today to anyone who needs it. I pray that you would give healing to anyone who needs it. Lord, I pray that you would feed us with something that we need today. No matter what the insight is, Father, I pray Holy Spirit, that you would speak beyond even what you have told me to speak. And I pray that you would remain with us as you said you always would. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, everybody. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Justine said, can you pray for your emotional wounds caused by your family? Sure. We're just getting started, though. Hallelujah. I'm sure that this word will bless you if you can be patient because we'll probably be here for a while. And we pray normally towards the end. Hey, Ophi, God bless you. So I'm in John 4. I hope somebody brought their Bible. If not, you got the Bible app or something. Hallelujah. Because I want to get into the scripture a little bit. As God was showing me some things. I'm in John chapter 4. Hallelujah. And I love this passage of scripture so much because it's very unexpected. Right? Can you all hear me well? Hallelujah. 
it's much too hot especially in this truck to turn off the air so I apologize for the background noise but uh, I can't be roasted in here I'll turn into rotisserie quickly so we can't do that <laughs> I'm in John chapter 4 so Jesus is is coming from uh, he's coming from baptizing people right and so he wants to leave and he wants to go to Galilee, his hometown. But he has to cross through Samaria. And so we catch up with Jesus there. And it says that he came to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the plot of ground that J Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied from his journey, sat thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour. So it's about the sixth hour of the day. It's about 3 p.m. It's hot. It's very hot out there. Remember, they're in the desert. Okay, verse 7. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Then the woman... Then the woman of Samaria said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as well as his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water, that I may not thirst, nor come here to draw. <laughs> and Jesus begins to prophesy, and Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. And the Lord Jesus said to her, You have well said I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one whom you now have is not your husband. And that you truly spoke. Verse 19. The woman said to him, Hmm, <laughs> Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. And Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to Him, I know that Messiah is coming. He who is called Christ. When He comes, He will tell us all things. And Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am He. <laughs> and at this point his disciples came and they marveled that he talked with a woman yet no one said what do you seek or why are you talking with her and the woman then left her water pot went her way into the city and said to the men come see a man who told me all things that I ever did could this be the Christ then they went out of the city and came to him in the meantime his disciples urged him saying rabbi eat but he said to them I have food to eat of which you do not know. Therefore the disciples said to one another, Has anyone brought him anything to eat? Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me, and to finish his work. Hallelujah. We'll stop there. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> now understand, Jesus positioning himself at the well is very symbolic 
and it's very prophetic. And he knew what he was doing all the way through. See, Jesus, it says in verse 6, therefore being wearied from his journey, sat by the well in the heat of the day. So Jesus is tired. Jesus is tired at this point, and he goes to the well to sit down. And then, and then the woman comes, and he tells the woman, give me a drink. He, tell, he tells the woman, give me a drink. Understand this. Jesus, when he begins to speak to the woman, though physically an ailment, he begins to be filled and fulfilled by doing the thing that he's called to do. Some of you are weary and some of you have been hurt. Some of you have been ministering for a while. Some of you have been giving to people when you don't have anything yourself. And Satan, because of the arrogance of people or, or however they may have treated you or rejected you, you may have backed up from doing the thing that you've been called to do because let's be honest here, we're gonna go through some revelations today. But Satan can manipulate and twist the same people that you're called to be with to the point that you can become weary. You can, you can be tired of dealing with people in a certain way. And so, Jesus, you realize Jesus' methods, the way that he worked, he was very tactful in who he engaged in certain ways. Realize when they found out that, he says, when they found out that they were baptizing more than John, he didn't realize it says that he left. He didn't want to deal with the Pharisees. So he avoided them. Some of you would be like, oh, he's a coward. He's, the, you know, religious people. Oh, and he should have stood on business. Jesus is wise. He said, I don't want to deal with these people and their demons. Let me leave and go where there's actually a need. Where people are what? Thirsty. Hungry and thirsty for righteousness. So Jesus positions himself. Himself being weary. What is? Wh wh why was he weary? <laughs> why was he weary? I mean, we see it in scripture, but it doesn't really say. But through what is being said, you know why he was weary. He's weary because he's fasting. <laughs> he's fasting. He wakes up. This is Jesus's. This is Jesus's routine. He wakes up early before people and he goes on a mountain to pray. He comes back, teaches his disciples. They go in the morning and they do what they do. This is the third hour of the day. This is 3 p.m. Jesus wakes up way before the sun comes up. So this is, well, we're well into Jesus' fasting and he's weary. And the woman said, and he says to the woman, give me a drink. She said, we're not, we don't really talk. You know, Samaritan, you being a Jew, you know, there's that, uh, there's that animosity there. And Jesus said, if you knew the gift of God, huh? And who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Understand this. If you're a Christian who doesn't understand the secret place, that's the reason why your life is dry. The reason why your life is dry, like the <laughs> at like Samaritan desert at Jacob's well, is because Christian haven't understood the secret place, the secret well of drawing understand this he was already telling her what she needed without understand without her understanding she had to walk from the city up a hill or or however it was configured to go to the well and when that thing was done that picture was gone those buckets that she carried that were heavy when 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 it was done she had to go back down she would consume it she would water and feed her you know <laughs> her livestock or whatever, she would have to come back up and do that. But Jesus is saying, whoever digs in themselves that would position themselves for that secret place where water could begin to flow, no matter where you are, I don't have to climb a mountain to go and speak to God. I don't have to go and be in a certain church building to speak to God. 
I don't have to go to a certain place. You know, Africa, they'll go to the mountain. You know, there are certain people will do certain things because there is a spiritual implication to it. But I'm here to tell you that necessarily you don't have to do that. I can be anywhere now because of that well that is being dug in me. Though when you meet the Lord, you'll meet him in a specific position. There will be a certain man of God that will be the access point. I don't know who's hearing me, who's spiritual. That you can't meet God everywhere, but you can meet God in a location. But once you have established that relationship and that well has been dug in you, you can access God at any time. Because now that secret well is in you. You have times of refreshing, as the Bible says, when you have repented. Now times of refreshing come. Yet that refreshing is not outward. It comes from inside of you, welling in your being, the Holy Spirit immersing and filling you, and it begins to rush and pour out even upon you. It's a great mystery. It's a great mystery. So Jesus is telling this woman, look, you need to have a different type of water. <laughs> because if you get this water, mm -hmm. let, let, let's, let's look at what the scripture says. But whoever drinks of this water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. This is what you need to understand. Those intimate moments when you hear the voice of God when you hear your father's voice that's that secret well I, I, I think that some Christian uh, have become too callous and too mighty in themselves that you need to realize God is compassionate and he cares for you he's, he wants to be so close to you more beyond what you want to be close to him he's willing to cross oceans to get to you he's, he's, he, listen the, the death that he died <laughs> just to be able to see you, to be happy, to be blessed, to have eternal life. This God is very strange and there's no one like him. He's willing to do beyond what, what sometimes we're willing to accept with our carnal mind. And so understand when he begins to speak, many times people are af like afraid or they will be like, is this God? Why would God want to speak to me? In the beginning stages, it's like that. But you have to realize how much he loves you. You have to realize how much he's willing to comfort you. Even in the what you may think is the mundane or the meaningless. He'll speak to you intimate things. Direct things to direct you. Because he cares about every single detail. Even he has said that every one of your hairs of your head. I know I don't have much right now. But he said every one of the hairs of your head are numbered. So that means even if I shave my head, he's, he does a recount quickly. God is so attentive to the details of our life. We need to really be mindful of it. And, and understand that he's wanting to continue to dig into you to the point that you have this closeness with him this closeness with him this closeness with him beyond anybody made of flesh realize God is spirit but yet he lives in our spirit it says that that whoever whoever right is with the Lord, is one spirit with the Lord, right? You have the Holy Spirit. You're one spirit with the Lord. Your spirit and the Holy Spirit are together in one. Is everyone with me? What you need to understand is this. Jesus went from being weary in the flesh. But when he spoke to the woman... And, and he begins to minister and prophesy to the woman and tell her what God is doing. You no longer seeing, see God being famished, weary, hungry, or thirsty. Now he's fulfilled. He's filled and fulfilled. Some of you need to understand, and we all do, that being filled with the Holy Spirit, when you allow that, when you allow his things to fill you, 
you will be fulfilled. You will be fulfilled. There's many people that grow mighty in the flesh and they have abundance of money, they have abundance of food, but at the end of it, they realize, I have all these houses and cars and all these things, but there's something lacking here. I'm not fulfilled. I, I My purpose is lacking. You find your purpose at the secret well. See, so, some of us ha don't have access to everything we need because before God gives you the abundance of everything that you would want, He allows you to go through the process of digging the well that, that, that you would live in the rivers of the Spirit rather than in the system of the world. He doesn't want to lose you because of the abundance that He wants to give you. So that's why you have to go through the process of all these things. Is somebody hearing me? If God thinks that he's going to lose you and knows that he's going to lose you, then he's not going to give you until the time where you're ready. Because he would rather care for your soul and prosper your soul rather than prosper your flesh and then lose you. Realize after... This is scripture. <laughs> realize after... Jesus spoke the, the words of living water. There was nobody at the well. People left what they were doing in the city and went to the well. So because he gave living waters, people congregated at the same well that natural water was. Are you understanding? Because he was giving a greater water. And even the Bible is saying this. Then they said, this is verse 42, Then they said to the woman, Now we believe, not because what you said, for we ourselves have heard him, and we know that this indeed, this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. So they were excited because he prophesied to her. Hallelujah. <laughs> but <laughs> they were even more excited when they heard his teaching and the other things that he had to say. Hallelujah. I want to tell you the seriousness of the time. There's going to be many people that regret in this time. You know why? Because I think people have taken it for um, slackness, right? This is the time where people say, you know, gee, I don't think Jesus is coming. You know, it's been long. <laughs> You know, I don't, I don't think he's really... Listen, Jesus is coming. He's giving us time to prepare now. And understand this. This is one thing that he, he, he told me two years ago. You need to prepare now because a lot of people are about to die. You have to understand wars are coming. Famine is coming. You need to be wise. And if you don't have the wisdom, you'll just be like another person that just is here and then gone tomorrow. So if you want to live in your purpose... If you want to live in your purpose, all these things that he is saying, take him for what he has said, face value. And then seek for yourself and look for the revelation. God, how does this apply for me? Understand the source of my water. Understand when you when you pray. <laughs> Somebody is telling me when you pray and this and that. That's that's great. Listen. <laughs> When you pray to the Lord, He'll tell you things that you not, knew nothing about. And understand this. That the, the water that you need for your own deliverance may not be the water I need for my deliverance. So, that's the reason why we should all get to the place where we have our own well. It's that place where you continually come. Because after I close this live stream, a demon may come and try you. We may pray and demons come out and you get deliverance. But then at the same time, you see what I'm saying? That thing wants to go back to the well at Samaria. It wants to go to the dry place. Then it wants to see if there's a dry place in you. So everybody needs their own well. Surely the protection of the Lord is with His words. And His power is with His word. 
So there's, there, there is a need to be able to engage the voice of the Lord. Realize that no prayer it, without insight from God is impacting anything. So you know that, that, that your prayer is impacting when you've heard His voice directly and you pray accordingly. People love to say, oh, I pray, I'm a prayer warrior, I pray. But listen, if you're not praying the prayer of the Holy Spirit, then you're swinging a miss. You're swinging a sword in general, and you may hit something, but you don't know what you hit. But if you could see from God and hear from God, and you pray to destroy something, and one of those ways is having the impression of, this is the symptom of this spirit that is coming to fight me. So now all of a sudden you can hit your target because this that's why people say, oh, it's the, the spirit that gives you headaches. It, it, what spirit is that? Well, that's the demon is, <laughs> that's the symptom of the demon. <laughs> Are you understanding? It's, right, okay. So the symptom, just because you, you say any spirit that does this symptom, because that was the impression on your spirit, now all of a sudden you're hitting the target. But if you neglect to understand that portion of discernment, you see what I'm saying? And that's the beginning of discernment. When you go deeper, you see the form of the demons. When you go deeper, you see a vision of such and such. So, so God begins us there in. Realize this. I think people are, are ignorant, so I have, to, I have to teach in a certain way. When you begin hearing God, you hear impression. You know, I heard Papa Lowe saying this thing, and it's true. But us prophets, when your spirit is built up, you hear an audible voice. But that's because your spirit becomes aligned. You hear him with the audible voice. And everyone should. But the issue is, not many people know the strength of how to be spiritual. So we'll go half in as a Christian and we'll say, oh, don't go too deep. Let's just lean on scripture. But yet Jesus is saying, come to me so I can give you eternal life. Come to me, I have the, and Peter said, where will we go? <laughs> you have the words of eternal life. Come to me, I have the well that will continue to spring up in you. So hearing his voice, it gives the release of water. Refreshing. Some people will put on music. They'll put on their soaking. They'll put on, some, they'll try to create an atmosphere and God will speak to you therein. That's good. That's a good thing. There's nothing wrong with that. However you need to do so, do so. Use your tools. But in the same way, some of us don't need that. We can just hear from God anywhere. And that is that is becoming strong and being filled with that water. God bless you, Nate, my son. God bless you. Prophet. Prophesizer. <laughs> in the making. Hallelujah. So... So as he's releasing, as he's speaking to you, understand that when you're discerning certain presences, some people will say, you know, it's cold. It's, it's like fire, but it's cold. You know, it's like, it's, it's, it's cold. It's like pouring. Understand that it's water being released. You go to church and you begin to worship. The presence comes and it's thick. Understand God is already speaking. God is already speaking. So for you to be aligned, you have to learn how to control and how to access your own spirit. Anyone who can't access their own spirit will continue to be dull. You'll continue to be thirsty. The presence can refresh you. But he said that times of refreshing shall come in his presence. So he didn't say that the presence is what's refreshing you. It's his voice. <laughs> it's his words. <laughs> times of refreshing shall come in his presence. His voice is through the presence. <laughs> Understand if you have a need, there's no father that wouldn't tell the, the child what the solution is. So it's the ignorance in us to say, well, we just get in God's presence, we trust Him, we thank Him, we hope for the best. That's great. But it's still the ignorance of the carnal man to think in this way. When instead, you should be positioning yourself to hear directly, what is God saying in this situation? We, should, we Listen, He said that, I will tell you, <laughs> this, is, this always turns into a prophetic message, it's crazy. <laughs> God, the extra deep. 
<laughs> he said, I'll tell you. <laughs> and, and I'll tell you before it happens. When it happens, you'll believe that I'm he. You'll believe that God, that Jesus is God, when he tells you ahead of time and you see it come to pass. We shall all be living in the prophetic realms of God. Why? Your, your life as a Christian, as a prayerful, faithful Christian, you should know what's going to happen ahead of time. That's just the nature of God. He's not, listen, listen, his cloud, even when they were walking through the wilderness, they're walking out of Egypt. And there is what? A cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. But realize there's a cloud in front of them and behind them. So God is always speaking in our past, but he's speaking in our future as well. And he'll tell you. I don't know who's hearing me. Let's get the likes up. <laughs> you guys are just looking at me through the phone. I can feel it. <laughs> Shy. <laughs> I don't know who's hearing me. Who's hearing me? Kira Masharataya. Listen, some of, some of your wounds, you need the word of God. Some of you have been broken down, beaten down, insulted. You need the word to come and heal that wound. You need, you need God to come and build you now. What happened in the past, yes, you've been through. But now you need the word to come and heal you now and comfort you. You've been taught by people, some of you have been taught by people who are actually just mean. They were just actually just harsh. <laughs> They, they portrayed God in a certain way. And God is not the angry, ah, oh, he's not angry like that towards us, his children. He's not. <laughs> he's not. He's not looking to burn us down. God is actually more gentle than even we are. Which is the thing that's crazy. He's all powerful, could destroy us, and yet he's more gentle than me and you. So understand, God bless you. Uh, Christ driven. My wife said no hat. No, I, I'm not wearing the hat right now. Hallelujah. <laughs> it is a nice hat though. Thank you, Jesus. So, I, I want you to understand something very closely. The Pharisees had all the scripts that you could have. They had all the scripture that you could have. But it says, watch out for them because when they make a follower, when they bring you into their sect, they'll make you a child of hell. So realize that they'll fill you with something. With hellfire. <laughs> they'll fill you with religious demons. Jesus is coming calling them brood of vipers. Jesus was not harsh in speaking that. His discernment is, I see the demons inside of you, which are vipers. You're willing to swallow and, and, and destroy one another to become the one that is prominent. You're willing to do whatever it takes to become the last one. You're the last conqueror type of people. <laughs> That's what brutal vipers do. They eat each other. So, so he's, he's saying you guys are ambitious. You're trying to look in a certain way instead of trying to feed the people and make them to... What did he say? He said you shut up the kingdom of heaven. You yourself don't go in. And you for sure make sure that nobody else can enter in. So watch out for the people who are not giving you of their spirit or their, their treasure that they've received from God. Instead, they're telling you what you can't do. They're shutting... No, you didn't see anything. No, God's not speaking to you. Those type of people. Ah, uh, well, we'll watch you. We'll look. <laughs> we'll see. No, I'm more anointed. So I stand here in the prominent place. Watch how I pray. I was on a 40-day fast. And what can you do? Only three days? I'm glad I'm not like you, you tax collector. These people are fake. <laughs> They've become fake by reason of what's in them. Listen to me closely. Jesus said, wash the inside of the cup then let the outside be cleansed so there has to be the pouring of the water of the lord inside the words that he speaks he said the word that i speak has already made you clean by reason of the living water pouring in us we're made clean 
but then the outside is made clean periodically. We're already saved, but then you go through sanctification, the outward cleanliness, that the Spirit of the Lord could rest even upon you, that by reason of the overflow, somebody else can receive based on your relationship with God. But understand that there is hellfire in somebody who's religious. They're doing something from God, yet they've not heard from Him. You've become out of order. Now you become a false prophet. And you become someone ah, who is speaking doctrines of devils, seducing spirit. By reason of what is in someone, somebody's life should be bettered. And if it's worsened, then you know what fruit is in that tree. That's why I always talk about intentions are more important to God rather than action. Huh? The intention starts. Jesus said adultery started in the heart. <laughs> he said unclean, all manner of unrighteousness. It begins where? Inside. So if you can't pull anything out from God to bless people, but yet you have a platform for God, you need to go through your sanctification. You need to try again. I'm just being honest. And we shouldn't be condemning people in any way. Oh, be holy, be holy. Teach people how to be holy. <laughs> be righteous. Okay, show us righteousness. Because by reason of what's in you, if you pray for somebody and the desire leaves, you understand righteousness was in you. Now you preach it. But he said that, he said that if you're preaching sin and yet you're sinning, you can't pray and do anything because it will be no change for anyone. Are you understanding? You can't preach that message. There's some that can preach that message. But if you don't have the power of God that is backing your message and you're just a fan of the message, but you're not living the message, then that message is not for you. Because God sends no one without the power to do it. I can't sit there and say, I'm a prophet and I never prophesy. It's a lie. But I show you week after week after week, day after day. <laughs> so... <laughs> So realize that if you're doing, if you're called to do something, do it. And by reason of what is in you, it must come out. If you're unclean, you're going to spill out uncleanness onto people. Don't think that you're doing anything for God. If you're <laughs> in another way, I'm just being honest. It has to be all the way real. And this is the way Jesus does. He does it by first. Don't, don't listen. If you yourself are not filled with water and, and comforted and have heard from him, then don't go trying to pour into somebody else's life when you have nothing in you. Just care for yourself. God is not calling you to go out. God does not call anybody to go and do before you've heard. Just being honest. Some people are laboring, but they're laboring in vain. And I'm not here to discourage anybody. I'm just trying to align us so that we can become an accurate, prophetic people to understand this is not how it works. Some people have gone, wait, what did they say? Put the cart before the horse. It makes no sense. <laughs> Some, we need to regroup. <laughs> and really think, wait, okay. Let me see where I'm actually called. Jesus did not call us into vagueness. He didn't. Let me tell you one of the most profound encounters that I've had with the Lord. I was with the Lord in the realm of the Spirit. And when I entered this vision, I was in a temple area. Um, is how I could explain it. And there was hills. I saw mountains around there. It was in a valley. And in this place, I saw the Lord Jesus standing there. And you could barely see Him. That's how bright He was. Standing there. And... and there was many people there who were in alignment and this was a vision of the thousand years reign of Christ which is coming. It's coming after this time. Don't forget, heaven, we're not going to be in heaven forever. Heaven's going to come down. We're going to be on earth. And then there's going to be heaven and new earth. So this thing was dangerous because God was there in his glory. You could feel the presence and the power of God so strong is coming in as I'm, as I'm telling it. Right, And so he's standing there and there were people that opposed him at that time, as the scripture says. And when the Lord stood up, he turned those people into dust with the snap of his finger or whatever he did. If he lifted his hand and waved his hand, it had been years since I had seen this vision, right? 
And when they did it, though, I remember that they turned into dust. And everyone at that, when he stood up, every the light that was released, everyone bowed. It's a dangerous thing to oppose this Christ and think he's small. When he comes, I'm telling you, uh, <laughs> you will fear and tremble. If anybody who has really seen them or met him, <laughs> they think <laughs> they think he's small. And you see us speaking with power and with fiery intent. You try and fight me, I speak in a certain way. Wait till you meet him. <laughs> Wait till you meet him. <laughs> Wait till you meet him. They think he's small. He'll say, where are those who didn't want me to rule over them? Let me crush them with my feet. That the blood will go up 16 miles. This guy's a conqueror. He's not playing any games. But for now, it's for us to learn. <laughs> the closeness and the comfort of him. Who are in his house and his family. As for them who are outside, the severity of the Lord is still on them. The full weight of sin is on them. That's a dangerous thing and people are living anyhow. But for us, we need to get that well in us. <laughs> we have serious work to do. I think people think life is just however. Life is not whatever. Listen, if you've been called and you have a talent in your hand, get to it. Because if he says, "My wicked, you wicked servant, you buried your talent. So God is looking at, look, you didn't do this with the talent. There's 10,000 souls like a that are not unaccounted for because of your talent. There's 10,000 people that should have went to heaven because of you. You did nothing. Hey. <laughs> no, sir. So we ask for his grace and mercy. Hallelujah. Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. Notice this. You begin to desire again. When you partake of, let's let's say this water is physical. Physical, natural things that you look to fulfill you, they begin to dry up. You say, man, I need something else. You got the Lambo, Diablo. Now you need the Murcielago. Okay, now you need the... <laughs> now you need the... <laughs> so when you look to these things to fulfill... Wow, I finally have the 16-bedroom mansion with 14 bathrooms. I don't know what I'll do with 14 bathrooms. <laughs> All of a sudden, now you're like, man, this is a lonely house. This thing is huge, but it's lonely. You look to these physical achievements and goals, and then you have it, then it's nothing. The man in the Bible said this. He said, I know what I'll do. I'll store up my wealth, and I'll put it all in a barn, and I'm rich, and I'll be merry, and I'll drink, and this and that. And God came to him that night, and he died, and he killed him. He said, you're foolish. But it says this. Notice the next line. It says, this is the fate of those who are rich but not towards God. So you can become rich physically and God has no problem with you being rich. He even said it right there if you read well. He said those who are not rich towards God. <laughs> so God will make you rich. But the key is not that you would be rich for you. Realize this. Jesus is weary himself. He's like, hmm, what's in him begins to overflow. And he pours into someone else that he is fulfilled and the person is fulfilled. Not only that, she tells everyone they come and be fulfilled. Look at the depth of the water that was in Jesus. Nobody was at the physical well. They show up at the well to hear the words of the Lord that everyone could be fulfilled. So that's the depth of the waters that were in Jesus. You notice somebody, <laughs> Jesus. When you notice that the depth of the water in you is becoming much, prepare yourself because God will then bring the people to be fulfilled. All right, I hope you're hearing me. I may not have a church building, but I think we're, what, 4.4K on here now? And it's continuing to increase. It's not because you like to see a guy who shaves his head, who has a prey shirt that's sitting in a truck. But God had prepared me in secret. <laughs> And he had showed me ahead of time people coming. It's been for, I'm telling you, it's been decades of molding. I know directly what I'm supposed to do. And if I'm not doing it, I do not feel fulfilled. I feel weary like Jesus when he's at the well. I'm seeing people's faces and I'm seeing people coming. I'm bringing this amount of people. I'm bringing that. God is showing me. I'm not ignorant. I'm a real prophet. <laughs> but the thing is, is this. I think that 
the fake is fading away. Don't you notice? The fake is fading away in relevance. By now, somebody has understood this. And doesn't matter where you are, doesn't matter if you're on the fancy temple or if you're on the mountain, but people will come to hear the real. They will come to experience the real Jesus, the real words which are coming. Understand this. Somebody said the veil is thinning. It's extra deep. For some of us, there is no veil. <laughs> <laughs> but some of us there's no more veil when you figure out that there's no more veil <laughs> the only veil is the flesh so whether your spirit can well up or not that's the key mm -hmm. that's the key and Alexandra is saying this test the spirit well understand this the Bible is saying that you know in the end there will be false prophets that come they will do signs and wonder they will do this and that but understand Jesus is telling you this because there is a distinction. <laughs> There's this distinction, but undiscerning people will not realize the distinction. You have dreams of healing, casting out demons, been going through the fire my whole life. God is using you and he's molding you. That's what I'm talking about when God is giving you water. When you have dreams that come, <laughs> dreams that come to pass. God is giving you. You're entering that place where you are filled and you're getting ready to fulfill others. Some people will never succeed unless you do your, your assignment. I'm just being honest. It's very important. They're praying and saying, God, I, I just want you to come do it. And God is sending some of you. God is sending some of you. And it's for them to understand, this is the place now. This is the time now. If you reject a person, <laughs> God may not send another. You realize that, right? So it's for wisdom for the person receiving to say, wait. There was a time where I would minister and people would hate me. Christians, they would reject me. Ah, they, they used to tear me up. Then it became too much that it would be all years now. <laughs> it just became too much. <laughs> Like, okay, we can't resist this anymore. No, it was a time when people hated me. I'm just being honest. They really, they really hated me. Doubting me. But yet God was sending me. They said, oh, well, we don't know. People say what they are and they, this and that. They're not real. Okay, that's fine. But then later on begging, oh, come back, minister with the no. You, you missed it. It's, it's over. It's done. Realize when you're rejected, the Bible says, beat off the dust off your feet. That they're not even worthy of the dust of your feet. You, re you realize, <laughs> man of God, Lonnie said, hate the truth, huh? Shaking my head. Yeah, they don't like it. Realize even Jesus was telling them, they're not worth, that's a saying in the Middle East, they're not worth the dust underneath your feet. Because we came from dust. <laughs> ah, this Jesus is direct. Some people who are, who are politically correct, they, they, they won't like Jesus when they meet him. <laughs> they say, ah, how can you speak to me like that? Then they'll turn to dust. <laughs> Listen, this, this God is not emotional like that, yet he cares for our emotions. It's very strange. He didn't create us to have emotions so that we could be led by our emotions. But it's so that they could be a gauge on how we're being impacted in our soul. I hope you're hearing me well. But the real thing that God wants to do is to fill us spiritually, that our spirit will become strong, that we'll hear from our Father, and we'll do what is needed. M2 said, or is that an RV? No, it's not an RV. It would be way more spacious if it was, a, if it was an RV. <laughs> That's for sure. That is for shizzle, as you all say. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Listen, he wants us to be real and be strong. You realize this. I realize people who don't like me or reject me, they're looking for me to be like, ha! Ah, God! Listen to me. I don't have to do all that. We don't have to do that to be real. When you're real, you just be you. If you like that, that's fine. That's cool. There's some people that are powerful that do that. I'm not saying that that's bad. All I'm saying is I don't want to be like that. Because for me, it'll be fake. That's not me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't I, we can't do that I, I think that you'll listen to even to how my voice will sound 
just to see if uh, mm, is it authentic or not. So so people are looking for that or they're looking for the church building. They miss the impacting because I know some live streams are way better than even if you went to some people's building. I'm just being honest. Sometimes that we have on here are so powerful. And God really shows up. This is the reason why Jesus spoke this type of message. He said, anywhere that you are, anywhere that you are, you can come and worship God in spirit and truth. <laughs> That's exactly how he is. He said, you imagine y'all to be calm in his tone and preaching. That's how he is. God bless you, Mr. Smooth. That's how he is. Unless he's angry. Ah. <laughs> Some of you don't understand when you're when you're coming to speak from God and, and you're being molded as as a real prophet or a prophetic person, God is so harsh on you sometimes. You'll say, but God, everybody else. <laughs> and he'll be so angry with you sometimes. I haven't heard God very angry with me in a while, but yet he'll speak so direct and he'll cut you. And you'll say, God, this one, ah. And so the way that I would speak to my sons and my daughters when they would come close to me, they'll be offended sometimes. I have to tell you exactly. Imagine, <laughs> listen, you have to tell it how it is if you're going to be a real prophet. If you're going to speak the words from God, if you're going to do your real calling, if you're going to real, be a real pastor, if you're going to be a real evangelist, if you're going to be a real teacher, you have to speak it how it is, whether it hurts somebody or not. That's just how it is. That's love. That's really loving. And we can't sugarcoat and baby them. It's okay. Sometimes it's not okay. Stop sinning. <laughs> You're destroying yourself. Look at these demons coming in. I'm trying to help you. I want you to be blessed. I want you to do this in this way. But you need to stop. Jesus speaks to the woman. <laughs> he said, come bring your husband. Spiritually, you're married. Come on. <laughs> huh? <laughs> no, I have no husband. Yeah, you're right. You had five. That one's not your husband. You didn't get married. But you're living together. <laughs> I perceive that you are a prophet, sir. So, so he said it how, it how it needed to be said. He didn't come and destroy her. Why hast thou shacked up? <laughs> no, he, he softly rebuked her. Bring your husband. I have no husband. Okay, yeah. Now that you provoked me to really show you, I know what I'm saying. Look, all these things have happened. I see this in your past. The one where you are now. He's, 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 he did hindsight. Then he's doing insight. <laughs> the one you have now, bring them. Come on. <laughs> Quit playing with me. I'm a prophet. You don't know me. <laughs> Jesus said, hey, you'll find out today. She said, when the Messiah comes, he said, I'm he. She said, ah. <laughs> she said, Jesus Christo. <laughs> so, so understand, you have to speak in a certain way. So that people will then be convicted. They don't want to be destroyed. Some people are looking for the prophetic. Ah, I'm the prophet. I will destroy you. I saw you sitting three days ago. <laughs> Listen, I keep telling people, why do you want it? Because I look in people and I'll say, you only want it so you can be proven right. Ah, it's pride and arrogance. God won't give you. If I connect you to the prophetic, you'll get so far, but you'll lose it. And you may destroy yourself. Because it's actually a burden to enter into the secrets of people. Realize... When, when Jesus wanted to give a well, understand, uh, can I teach spiritual things here? Understand if something is resonating, that's why they say test the spirit. So understand that, uh, I know somebody could be angry with this teaching. <laughs> if there's water in me and there's water in you and I begin to touch that water that's in you, all of a sudden I can know your secrets of your life. <laughs> because we're not really disconnected, we're connected. And even if you're dry, some of us can still enter that place. See, see, some of us, it's like Amos. There's no secret that God does without telling someone. So when you enter that realm as a prophet, not every prophet is there. Don't think that. It's not true. When you enter into that place, there, if somebody really prays about it, they're going to find out your secrets. God will, tell, God will expose you. He's snitching. He's completely telling on you. <laughs> That's why me... I'm not nosy. So God gives me more. I don't care. I'm, listen, <laughs> I'm the type that if God starts speaking or showing me, I'm like, God, why are you showing me this? 
Because they'll be in the random places. You're in the store. You're sitting in, in the truck. You're doing certain things. You don't even want, you just want to be regular. God's like, hey, look at this. God, why, why are you showing me this? I want you to pray for this. Okay, I'll pray for it. Or sometimes they'll leave no explanation. You're just hearing people's thoughts. You're reading their thoughts and they're acting according to their thoughts so you know it's true. <laughs> You're like, God, I don't want to be, let me turn this off. Can I turn this off now? <laughs> Can it just, let's just cut this. <laughs> This is why you find a lot of prophets that walk alone or isolated. Because the wickedness of men's heart that is unpurified. Ah, it's overwhelming sometimes. It, the people will be irritated around you when they come close. <laughs> You'll just be existing and loving people and people will just be angry with you. You'll say, another day. <laughs> and here it goes again. <laughs> Realize this, somebody was offended, and I'll, and I'll say it openly because we have to be real. Somebody who thought I was fail when I started this job, they're asking me, how's it going? I don't want to say it's your side hustle. I said, my ministry? <laughs> On TikTok? Uh, yeah, they threw shade at me. I said, it's grown by 2,000 people by now. They were shocked. Ah, really? I said, oh, you thought I wasn't really called. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> That's completely fine. Nobody knows who I am, for real. And I try to keep it that way, especially in my work and professional places. But people who know you according to flesh, they don't know what's in you <laughs> until you bring it out. But you begin to speak, okay, I saw you do this. <laughs> but like I said, you try to cut it off uh -huh. until it's ready. Realize Jesus didn't start with that. Some of you would have started with that. Oh man, <laughs> you're living with this. <laughs> That's not what Jesus did. So even in your ministering, when you're trying to give water to somebody, Realize that they, you can block their gates if you come in with arrogance and pride. That's never my intention. And that's not Jesus' intention. He's coming with softness. Woman, give me a drink. You know, he's relating back and forth in a loving way. Then he pulls it out. Some of you, I'm so anointed. Give me your head. <laughs> You're laying hands instantly. <laughs> There's an order to this thing. Even if you're finding, listen, if you're finding your husband or your wife too. Mm, God showed me in a vision three three months ago. I knew you would come to me. I knew you'd be in my DMs. I knew it. I should be regular. If God has shown you for real, just be regular and work accordingly. Use wisdom. Because it could be a way that God showed you the vision and you mess it up because you're being weird. <laughs> I fasted seven days for you to call me. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Somebody say Jesus Christo. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm, 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 mm. You know, Jesus was sick of those people in Galilee, right? <laughs> Jesus was sick of them. You know why? The Bible says that because of their unbelief, he could do no miracle. So Jesus coming wants to come to his own people <laughs> and he wants to pour that water out. And guess what? Those same people are the ones who reject him the most. They're so, <laughs> thank you, my brother. <laughs> they're so, they're so comfortable. Amen. <laughs> they're so comfortable with him. Oh, we know you. Yeah, you're, you're Joseph's son. Yeah, you're Mary's boy. Yeah. All your, all your daughters, I mean, all your, all your sisters are with us. We know you. But they didn't know him. There are many people that will know you, but they don't know you. When it gets real, they'll be like, oh, you, oh you're real. You're for real, for real. So, it's, it's sad because they could only see it. He's raising people from the dead, and they go and proclaim it in his hometown. But they can't have it. God bless you. Amen. They cannot have it. Because they shut off the gates of their own spirit of receiving. They're offended. Anyone you don't honor and you're offended at, you become too familiar with, you cannot receive from. People will see me, they'll say, oh, you're a young guy, this and that and that. Listen, God has trained me for 23 years to see. 
if you if you see me uh, uh, towards the flesh uh, if anybody would want to enter this work with me because I know for this work to increase I need people I'm not ignorant if anyone would want to really do the work with me when we get the building when we do all these things then you should pray that you would know who you're standing with you'll pray that if you don't even know yourself then you can't know me <laughs> but understand if you would see listen I downplayed certain people. I'll even say humbly, oh, I didn't know my spiritual father until I seen him spiritually. Well, I knew, oh, he's one of the ancient prophets. Okay, I get it. Let me stop touching. But many people are touching him, not realizing you're only bringing destruction. When it gets bad for you, you'll go and repent to God. And you should say you're sorry. There's certain people that you offended that you can't have success anymore because you offended God. Because they really took their life, crushed this person and molded them, gave them a piece of themselves push them out to pour living water to you, to you all. And by reason of you saying, oh, I don't like this guy because such and such, you're speaking against what God had molded very uniquely. And now you're bringing harm to you. But you could just say, Lord, let me receive humbly. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing. It doesn't look right, but God, let, show me. When the man, I'm telling you, when the man touched me, and I was already prophesying deep, but I'd never seen... I'd never seen visions like I'd seen after I left Prophet Lovis. He's for real, for real. You're doubting him, you're a fool. I'm just being honest with you. <laughs> ah, you're still in the foolish stages. <laughs> and it's mostly jealousy. It's flesh. You say you can't move forward if you don't forgive them. Well, evidence that if, I, if that's directed towards me, it's evidence that I have forgave them because I'm always moving forward. <laughs> I'm always moving forward. <laughs> I'm always increasing. Hallelujah. But that's very true. You can't move forward unless you forgive. Hallelujah. So some of you need times of... Uh, <laughs> some of you need times... Oh, okay. Amen. God bless you. <laughs> you said not directed at me. Amen. It's true though. <laughs> you said worldly. Uh huh. Realize this. <laughs> it may look like somebody's in the world. You touched them the wrong way, I guarantee. Listen, there was this one story. The man says, Don't pray for my son. I don't want you to touch them. The woman touches him and prays for him. He said, Did I not tell you to not do that? She said, who do you think you are? He said, when you leave here, you'll find out. The woman got sick and died. And God killed her and took her to heaven. Because you can't go above rank. You fight a prophet, you're putting yourself in a position for God to curse you and strike you. And God is the first one to curse anyone. Understand, it does. it's not coming from the devil. Some of you are being fought by, by God because you offended somebody. I'm just being honest. And, and until you say sorry, God is not lifting that thing. And I know because it's happened to me before. Oh, it's happened to me before. I stepped in a place where I prophesied accurately, but I didn't do it in love. And so there was a certain realm of the spirit that was blocked from me until I went back and said sorry to the people of that household. Because they were men and women of God too. Yet I saw it very deeply. I told them. They pushed me and offended me. And I reacted with sharpness and God rebuked me. And I had to go back and say sorry. <laughs> it wasn't that I was inaccurate. It was the way that I did it. So. <laughs> uh, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some of you need refreshing. Let's move forward. We're going to take up these prayers. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. We're going to say these prayers. Um, share this for me. Share this with somebody you care about before we go. Before we get started. Thank you, Jesus. It is hot in here. Man. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 
anyone who drinks of this water <laughs> let me stop <laughs> shall be thirsty again thank you Lord hallelujah you said the AC is not loud amen let me turn it up a little bit then all right let's pray let's just lift our hands let me see what percentage I got okay we're gonna say Lord we're looking for the kingdom Lord dig in me as I'm digging that I could find that pearl Lord I want to lay hold of the kingdom of God Truly it's written that the kingdom of God is at hand. Lord, if it's so, then let the kingdom appear now in our space. Lord, dig in us that well, that living water would flow therein. Father, anywhere that has become dry because your words are not entering us. Lord, let your words begin to enter us. We engage you now, Father. Lord, we ask for refreshing. Lord, we ask for the realm of your spirit to be unlocked towards us. Lord, anyone, I'm going to pray over you now, lift your hands. Anyone who is locked up, anyone who is having trouble accessing the spirit realm, anyone who is dry, anyone who is lacking strength, I pray right now. That the Spirit of the Lord would come and strengthen you. Let there be strengthening now. Let there be strengthening now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, anyone who needs details and prophetic instruction, Lord. Lord, I'm praying right now that you will begin to pour into us. Lord, let your hand pour your water into us, Father. Lord, even as I'm seeing your hand doing so now. Lord, let your hand begin to pour. Oh, Lord, from the wound of your hand, let it pour. Even as they pierced your side, God, they pierced you, Lord, with that spear, and water came rushing out. Father, we are of your flesh and of your bones, as your word says. Lord, let water begin to flow in us. Let water begin to flow in us. Let water begin to flow in us. Somebody take up this prayer. This is the prayer as I'm seeing the Lord. You need to say, Any spirit stagnating me, any spirit causing me to not have access to you, Father, let it be beat down. Let it be broken. Let it be broken. Let its power be broken by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. And Father, renew my mind. That's somebody's prayer right now. Renew my mind, Father. Renew my mind by the washing of the water of your word. Lord, there is three that agree. The blood, the water, and the spirit, O Lord, on earth. Father, let your water begin to flow. As it is working to cleanse us from our sins by your blood. And by the backing of the Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray right now. Let these things begin to activate. Lord, that spiritual gift that is in somebody, especially prophecy, let it begin to activate in the name of Jesus Christ. Let it begin to activate by reason of your touching, by reason of your presence, Father, by reason of your presence, Father. For somebody, today is the day of, of the next step of your sanctification. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God is giving you grace now. 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 Kira ba ropo so tora masela. Retasa pala roma ranandela. Refuso taramaila baranaila. Reki safananaila. In the name of Jesus, God is giving you the life of the Spirit and He's taking the deadness of the deeds of sin from your body. Mortification is happening now. As the Spirit is filling you now. I said, filling you now. I said, filling you now. As the Lord is breathing upon you now, that life dry bones in your life. I'm seeing dry bones coming to life in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for your life. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For this life is a desert. 
And this place where we are is a desert. But Father, I thank you that we've come to your will. Father, I thank you that we've come to your oasis. Our Lord, I thank you by reason of repentance that we've come to the times of refreshing. Let refreshing begin to flow now. There it goes now. There it goes now. I'm seeing a flood of waters being released unto you. And in our space. In the name of Jesus. Somebody's receiving cleansing now. Somebody's receiving cleansing. I hear the voice of the Lord saying that spirit that has been resisting you is going out. That spirit that has been resisting you is leaving. It cannot stand in the presence of the Lord. It cannot stand in the presence of the Lord. It, is, it cannot stand in the presence of the Lord. I hear the voice of the Lord saying, Dig deeper than you've ever gone. Go deeper than you've ever been. Continue seeking, continue seeking. This is, this is the scripture that he said. That he said you'll seek and when you search with your whole heart, you'll find him. And he'll speak to you things you knew nothing about. He'll go and he'll speak to you. I pray, it is my prayer, that now you begin to find the secret well. Go to the secret place that he'll fill you with water. And by reason of him filling you, that you'll hear his voice now. That you hear his voice beyond me now. Let it be so now. Let it be so now. Let it be so now. As the Lord is releasing. May you hear his voice now. 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 Se tu pasa aquí te reta secuma, se rapa so to so punda, se reta lo pura masandele, so ropo so fandele tea, se rana tenkindaya, so cura mayambea. Somebody is discerning fire upon you. You're discerning fire upon you. You just got hot. Kira masaterea. God is cleansing your hands. God is cleansing your mind. God is cleansing you now. Kurobu rebebebebebea. Shofurepepasetere let let clarity come into someone's vision. Let clarity come. The Lord is beginning to show you something. You're seeing light upon your spiritual eyes. May it become clear to you. May it become clear. May the clarity of the prophetic begin to enter now. Let it begin to enter now. Letura masakia makupurum. Sarafa sukura pasitiam. Shorofos umpos katanen entala masotoriam. Itinarat o lopos ataya la nandea sorofos amamare nekeranaya rekisaya God is showing me somebody's charitable acts. I was seeing like a roll of money in somebody's hand, and I saw you visiting somebody that was sitting on the sidewalk, and I I saw you being charitable, and the Lord is saying He's remembering you for that reason because you don't even regard money that much. You're just a loving person. I'm seeing the heart of this person, and you're actually really loving the Lord is saying I love you so much and and I'm going to give you your heart's desire because your heart is in my hand says the Lord now that we've prayed and come to a certain space don't stop meditating we've come to a certain space now realize this God didn't destroy that woman when she came close didn't even call her an adulteress or a fornicator. He loved her. 
God is almighty, but he's not destroying us. When you get to the secret place, that secret will. God comforts you, even in your emotions. I don't know what demonic teaching it is telling you, shut off all your emotions, don't get therapy. <laughs> Just be spiritual. No, it's a lie. When you become spiritual, God cares for your emotions too. He heals your soul and makes you whole. Come to the secret well. And I'm praying that that water that's pouring out now will begin to comfort you through the trauma that you've been through. That you'll receive soul healing even as he's speaking intimately with you now in this space. God is with you. He's here to love you like no one else. I may not be able to speak the word to you that you need. But Jesus Christ is here to speak the word beyond what any man can. Jesus is here to touch you. Jesus is here to love you like no one else can. Jesus is here to save you from all your troubles, even the internal ones and the external ones. This is real salvation, all encompassing. Begin to receive the calmness and the peace of the Lord. Begin to receive his peace, the shalom of the Lord, God's perfect peace. Let it be upon you now. Let it be upon you now. Let it be upon you now. Keep receiving from God. Keep receiving from God. Realize this. Also, try not to get too distracted. There's people that will come in and they'll manifest their demons. They'll be angry because what God is doing is very real right here in this space. So overlook them. We're not, we knew they would come. <laughs> when, we shouldn't give them too much mind. It's just for us to remain positioned. So that in this space, he'll continue pouring out and doing what he's doing. I see the hands of the potter making something new out of your clay. Hallelujah. I see the hands of the potter making something new out of your life. In the space where he's commanded us. I pray and it's my prayer that you would keep hearing the Holy Spirit even while I'm speaking. Beyond what I'm saying. Hallelujah. Beyond what I'm saying. But realize this, he's commanded us to be still. The stillness there is silence inwardly. In that calm, you have to have calm to hear from God. You can't have all sorts of thoughts running. You can't be pushed out of balance. In that stillness, you shall hear from the Lord. I say, you shall hear from the Lord. I said his voice is entering you now. I said grace is being transferred to you now. To hear his voice. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I said great grace is upon you. I said great grace is upon you. Somebody ought to begin to speak to your own life now. Say I'm anointed for this. My tongue is anointed. When I speak it comes to pass. When I speak to my finance it comes to life. When I speak to my family relationships that it comes to life when I speak into a situation it comes to life when I speak to my possession it comes to my life everything under my feet has become my possession I shall possess the gates of my enemies those who hate me shall have to come back to me God has made me a ruler of much hallelujah those those who possess their own spirit have self-control are greater than a mighty man in the flesh who takes a whole city. I have self-control. I am strengthened by the power of the Holy Ghost. I am strengthened by His power. I am anointed. I hear from the Lord Jesus. I see Him face to face. 
Father, you love me. And you love us. <laughs> Continue to affirm yourself. Continue to affirm yourself. I am anointed for this. I am anointed for my calling. I shall succeed in my calling. I shall succeed everywhere I go. The oil of favor is upon my head. Lord, you have blessed me with the oil of gladness beyond my companions. Lord, you have lifted me up high. Father, you get all the praise and the glory and the honor. Father, you are worthy to receive it all because you have given it unto us. Lord, you have made me more than a conqueror. Lord, you have made me of great stature spiritually. Lord, you have fortified me even physically. The blessing of the Lord runs over. I lend unto nations, O Lord, and Father, by reason of my giving, you give back unto me, that my bosom will be pressed down, shaken up and flowing over, bubbling up. Hallelujah. Lord, there is nothing that is out of my reach. There is no place where I cannot succeed upon the earth, for you have made me a ruler, even in the heavenly realms, how much more so in the earth. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father, that the nations shall call me blessed. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Lord, that by reason of the key which you have placed in my hand, somebody, somebody lift up your key prophetically. Uh, uh, by reason of the key of my access towards you, I unlock the destinies of many people. Many people go free out of the prison by reason of what I'm carrying. Kings shall come to my brightness. The Gentiles shall come to my great light. Because you have risen upon me, O Lord. Because you have risen upon me, O Lord. Feed me, Lord, and sustain me from the secret well. Let your water begin to rush over me. Let your waves and your billows pour over me. Father, sustain me and heal my broken soul. Lord, whatever I need, you become, and I thank you for it. Lord, that even by reason of what you are and who you are in me, you cause me to fulfill others by your substance, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you've called me. Father, forgive me if any way I've been prideful or arrogant or been misaligned by reason of the harshness of the war that Satan has brought me, by reason of the molding that you've allowed. Father, I know that it is for my good. It has all been for my molding and my promotion. Father, forgive me when I speak in my fleshly nature. Forgive me when I misaligned from you because you've anointed me for this. That as Job was a perfect man, you're perfecting me. That I would live from my spirit with my soul in subjection and my flesh subjected to my soul. Lord, let me be perfectly aligned with you. I see the Lord releasing visions now as his presence is increasing. Begin to see as he's sending out his light and his truth. Begin to see now. Begin to see now. Begin to see Erama Ropo Sofundereya, Letara na Ropo Sofundea, Sarama lo pure metane le cura masande le mesondo. Rofo sadantin la rama soto rendelaya. Spiritually I wash your feet now. Spiritually I wash your feet. Karama Sorebea. May you be authorized for greater authority in the name of Jesus. Letara masofu tandere teka. Letara masora basandare teka. Recuso fusotora mandele. Sarama lotoro naya. Soropo sandilaram. The release of his light. Kerama sotoi. The release of the glory of his light. Somebody is receiving another garment. I'm seeing a garment in the hands of the Lord. You're receiving a change of garments. Put on the garments of righteousness, says the Holy Spirit. Repuso fotundaraya. Of the Lord's righteousness, not your righteousness. The Lord's righteousness. You've been condemning yourself for the last two months for something that you couldn't break because I'm seeing a chain attached to you. But the Lord is saying, put on the garment of His righteousness. Hallelujah. Put on His righteousness. And God is cleansing you now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Thank you for your peace, God. Amen. 
Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> you know, it's a good thing that we have the Lord's righteousness. And 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 I want to tell a joke here. <laughs> Some people that come trying to offend us is funny. <laughs> ah, it's just I should deep my son. Listen to this. Some of you are uh, should be glad that we're not Elijah. Because <laughs> we'd be in our jurisdiction and God would look the other way. But it's a better way now. <laughs> Just being honest. <laughs> that we would love you. <laughs> no, you. You start saying foolishness on us. Imagine Elijah had a TikTok. <laughs> and he commands fire to come down. <laughs> no, you would be right. According to Jesus, he'll be right. But a better way has come. I'm just being... <laughs> when you really learn who God is, <laughs> you stop being quick to speak foolish things. <laughs> you learn to play your role. It, God is a master at humbling re rebellious people. I is a master. He's very skillful. He's very calm. He's very peaceful. But realize he's willing <laughs> he's willing to make war to to bring peace and the bible's talking about him being a man of war so understand that that it's 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 cost me war to bring you a presence like this or to pray like this and love you all like this beyond insults because people love to insult me for no reason smiley said brought me to tears feeling his presence amen ah you have you, some of you have no idea the war that it takes <laughs> And it's okay. But you'll learn when you're called. When God calls you deeply, you will learn that it's, it, wow, this one is crazy. And it'll look like you should give up because the way people are treating you. <laughs> and then nobody loves you or knows about you. And you're like, God, why, why all this? Later on, it makes sense. That's why it says you'll suffer. Your flesh will suffer because you have to go through that breaking and molding. To continue to go deeper every time i'm going deeper something comes to crush me tries to catch me off guard it's not really catching me off guard but but understand what i'm saying to you understand what i'm saying to you you have to continue on from the secret well no matter what people say about you whether they love you or not it doesn't matter anymore to be honest people will come for the need there's many people that love me for what I carry. They don't necessarily know me. You understand? And it's for me to be in my set place. Just to care and love people. That's it. She said, not gonna lie. I wanted to die yesterday. So much pain trying to be right for God. Sometimes you don't see your flaws. That's how it is. That's what Satan wants to do. He wants to bring you to a place of despair. But don't worry. God will strengthen you. Find somebody who's strong spiritually to build you up. Amen. Find somebody who's strong spiritually. Thank you, Alexandria. God bless you, woman of God. Amen. Matter of fact, I want to screenshot that. <laughs> Some, somebody needs to know. <laughs> the post it for the haters. <laughs> Some, some man came on here, act like I'm deceiving you. Let me, let me bring explanation. They said, uh, the apostles have to witness the resurrection of Christ and be with him. You people need to read your Bibles. If he read well, don't you realize that that's not finished? It's not, it's, it's not finishing. So then realize that there's some people who have witnessed his death, burial, and resurrection. You just don't know because they're in the spirit. You have to be in the spirit to do. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Atara, let me speak to you, Atara. Understand God is going to comfort you. And God loves you very much. He already loves you anyways. God loves you. If your belief is in Christ, if you've received Jesus and you have his spirit, because you can't accept him without having his spirit without the holy spirit we're not saying christ is lord right so 
understand since you have his spirit, he loves you so much. And he already loves you when you're in the world anyways. But now that you've come close, he loves you even more. Now he just wants you. He wants to purge you. He wants you to become aligned in a certain way. That your even your mind realize this. Even your mind. The strength of anybody, the strength, listen to me closely. The strength of anybody. The strength of anybody who is a, a woman of God or a man of God is not your spirit. Your spirit is being perfected by the Holy Spirit. The strength that is in you The strength that is in you is in the soul, is in the renewal of your mind. You guys are saying, can you, can I let Aaliyah in? We can pray for Aaliyah, but I'm not inviting anybody on there right now. I'm not doing it. We will pray for, sure. Listen to me closely though. Listen to me well. Satan is only attacking your mind. Demons can only attack your, in the soulish realm. They can't access your spirit. Your spirit is one with the Holy Spirit. So if you're, if, if you're misaligned, you're being, you're feeling bad, you, the war is going crazy, look where it's actually afflicting you it's never afflicting your spirit <laughs> ever it's only afflicting your soul so christians fail because they neglect understanding the soul realms one there's a crazy teaching that christians can't have demons yet when i see you i say come out and it comes out then you're like oh <laughs> they didn't know it was there it's there because you don't understand these are completely different dimensions altogether Man is flesh, soul, and spirit. Flesh, soul, and spirit. So if you're feeling it, what he tries to do is afflict your mind. Oh, this is what you've been through. This is, uh, yeah, you'll never get through this. So now he's molding you. Satan is molding you by thoughts. Rather than you being molded by the, the thoughts of God. Atara said, you thought that soul and spirit is the same. It's not the same. That's why the Bible says that you spend time with the word of God and it divides between soul and spirit. He can only attack your soul. So this is the reason David is, is speaking in the Psalms, having deep encounters in the spirit. Then he looks back and says, soul, why are you downcast? So he had to, he had to look at his own soul and, and tell it what to do. Rece rejoice in the Lord. For this, so his spirit had to speak to his soul. Because many times when you're going through and you're remaining in God, the devil is trying to tear up your soul. People will insult you like never before. People will come with all sorts of accusations filled with, listen to me closely. People do not, listen, if they're not receiving from you, I say leave people. I'm just being honest. More people, more demons. Many people are not okay. And the first ones who will be angry is men and women of God who want to compete with you. When was this a competition? I'm called alone. I'm, I'm called to do what I do. When did, when did I have to get authorization from you to be excellent? <laughs> when, when, did we, when did God speak to you and said, hey, only for this, this prophetess right here? Uh, yeah, if she says okay, then I'm fine with it. No, the Lord Jesus never said that. The Lord Jesus never said, include this person, this person. No, it wasn't conference call, as my papa says. <laughs> when God called us, it was alone. But yet people have made it to be, if this person is great, then I can't be great. What? No, 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 no. There's so many souls out here to save and to minister and speak to. We should work together. Now understand this. 
Satan would try to use trauma against you to change your mind and then once he's done that he'll try to speak to you and say look there's this sinful thing you should relieve yourself to go do sinful thing but that's the reason for this teaching even that when you're filled from the secret well you can access God by reason of his presence that he would fulfill you in the time that you're weary in the time where you're weak Mandy said, I'm set alone in isolation right now. It's so hard, but I know it's so worth it. Listen to me closely. If you're isolated, you have a you have a calling. You have a prophetic calling. And and pretty soon, or if you're not there already, listen, me, I love to be alone. There's a difference between being lonely and alone. <laughs> I love to be alone, but I also love to be with people. But when it becomes too much, I'm like, okay, it's good. <laughs> because realize being around people too much and they don't pray. You're always interacting with spirits. If you don't pray and speak to God, who are you speaking from then? There will be certain times uh, just a demon who will just enter in. Okay, the conversation's over. <laughs> All right, I, you can get away from me now. <laughs> not, not that I don't love them. It's just that God does that for our protection. <laughs> for a reason, so that he can... <laughs> he can... He can fill the space. Understand when God comes like a cloud into your atmosphere and you ascend spiritually to access his glory understand that his cloud will fill the space god's speaking to me all the time it's not if somebody oh how are you doing out there are you, you know no i'm fine <laughs> literally god comes to me so much and there's angels here and it's just strange but it's great it's supernaturally strange <laughs> and then you insert people and they start messing stuff no 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 <laughs> people will mess up your things <laughs> I'm just being honest this is why Jesus went alone to pray before the sun rose on the mountain alone he didn't get up hey Mark John why don't you come with no no because realize my your rank my rank by myself can produce a greater manifestation of his presence and glory he can do things isolated that he can't do in public so when the man of God comes down the mountain to minister Realize it's always lesser than what happens behind the scenes. I hope you're hearing well. It's foolish to think that, oh, they're showing us everything that we that we can receive. Listen to me. When you're alone, that's when the deepest things happen. Because nobody else's unbelief can cloud it. Nobody else's spirit or atmosphere. Literally, there was somebody that I went through a test and God was testing me. He was watching. But listen. There was somebody that I had to rescue on their truck, but I already knew that it was just an electrical shortage. They tried to do it on mine, but I prayed and I broke it. They did it on his truck, and I had to go and save him. He was here, and God was restricting his presence from the truck because that man would have been consumed completely. So for four days, I had to endure this person who didn't regard God, nor nor cared anything about God, but his demons were messing everything up. I said, this never happens when I'm alone. Everything you're doing is messing things up. I'm trying to love you, but I want you to leave me. You don't even respect God. <laughs> Understand that... <laughs> Jesus Christ. Understand when you've come to a certain place, everything you do prospers. Some people don't understand spirits and, and people that you're around or yoked with. God can't bless you because you still love that friendship. You love that family member too much. Leave them. He said, Abraham, leave your family so I can bless you. You don't want blessing because you love the person too much. Ah, this one's sharp. No, me, I left my family. I'm just being honest. I have to speak what's coming to my spirit. Hey! <laughs> Holy Ghost. <laughs> I'm just being honest. You can't be blessed. Hey, howdy. <laughs> you can't be blessed deeply until you've removed the attachments that are blocking your blessing. Certain people's demon will be fighting you. You'll say, every time I speak to this person, it just shuts down. <laughs> oh, my wife sent the cowboy hat. Ah. <laughs> You're crazy. <laughs> Are you hearing me? You'll be fighting people's demon. Jesus. <laughs> That's enough cowboy hats. <laughs> people's demon will be fighting you. Don't listen. Listen, listen. 
Don't be somebody that will just live anyhow. Because you can't draw near to God if you're not in the details. If you're a lazy person, if you if you go back and forth with the details, you're going to be messed up. When Jesus is giving you sustenance and telling you directly, Jesus said, Elijah, since you since you said, excuse me, since you said that at my word, I will I'll make it not to rain. Uh, there's there's gonna be a drought so I need you to go to this river and that's what I'm gonna feed you and you're gonna meet a woman there who I've commanded that he's good that she's going to sustain you so so Elijah goes there realize if you don't do the instruction when God is speaking to you from the secret well if you don't do the instruction don't expect to be have provision don't say God just come and help me People may come and help you for a time, then that will even dry up. Realize Elijah went there and the ravens that were that were commanded to feed him and the river, everything went away and it dried up. So then understand he had to now go to the widow and the widow had just a little bit and you know the story. So if, God, if Elijah is not following directly the direction, we're not sure that we're reading about Elijah or that Elijah even survives through that season. Our understanding. Don't be somebody who asks for help. The help comes. The instruction comes. You don't do what's required of you. It's foolishness. Pearl said, can the enemy hear our thoughts? For sure. The enemy can hear your thoughts because your thoughts are speech in the realm of the spirit. That's why the Lord Jesus, it says that he perceived their thoughts. If you read scripture well, you'll see that when Jesus, it says the man was thinking something. He was saying, mm, blasphemy. Jesus perceived their thoughts and answered them. So it's speech in the realm of the spirit what you're thinking. So people who are raggedy, let me just say that. <laughs> let, me, let me just say that in the way that I'll say that. If you're raggedy in your thought life, realize that that place needs to be purified then you can really live with results from God you have to check certain certain thoughts should not be there if you're not complete in your in being completed in your sanctification you'll say I live spiritually you may obey God according to a certain place but then there will be certain desires that will enter into the thought space you have to purify that place as well that's real deliverance because these are spirits that are interacting with your soul are you hearing me? I don't know who really believes the word of God. <laughs> I don't know who's understanding what I'm saying. Satan, when he comes, he'll try to put something on you. You're hearing a demon. And you, say, you know, this thing happened to you. You know, or they'll say it like this. This thing happened to me. Yeah. Now I'm depressed. He'd be like, I'm sad now. All of a sudden, mm, now I feel like so, so that's, that's how these demons speak. They speak as if they're you. <laughs> because they're desiring to enter through that space. Every time that they're speaking, realize speech is a door. I don't know who's ready. I don't know who's ready to become spiritual. Speech is a door. So if you're hearing certain things in your head space, realize it's a door. They're looking to access. Can I enter this one? Let me see if, if sexual lust is there because I can enter in through this. If I place this, try to place this image or place this type of thing here, let me speak to it first, see if it responds. Oh, okay, there's a place to land there. Understand this, hear me well. A space was created, he said, create, it, leave no space for the devil. There was a space created in Judas Iscariot. Judas was okay. Jesus resurrected Judas. Read your Bible well. It says that, the Lord appeared with Judas and many of the people when they resurrected. They walked through town. So he ra after Judas killed himself, Jesus raised him up from the dead. But So Judas wasn't a bad guy. But Judas had a place for the devil to enter in. Understand what I'm saying. Understand. The Bible says this. This is why I want to come with a teaching called People Are Not Strong. <laughs> and you will do it. Understand people will be, oh, I'd never do that. No. Listen to me. If a demon overpowers you, you will do it. Because a demon will, 
will overpower you to bring its desire upon your life, upon you, destroy your destiny if it can, if it wants to. If you become a destroyer, a demon will try to overpower you. I'm being honest. You have to be on point to walk with God closely. Yo, listen, this man is in the room. He's in the room with Jesus. <laughs> Satan, the Bible says Satan enters Judas. Jesus turns and says, I'll, I'll tell you in a minute, Atara, how to purify your mind. I'm getting there. But listen, he turns and looks and he says, go and do what you need to do quickly. Go and do what you'll do quickly. He's not speaking to Judas. He's speaking to, to Satan. Satan takes Judas to sell Jesus. Why? Because he was already a thief. So that spirit was already speaking to him to create a space in Judas. He was already stealing from the money bag. That when Satan's like, this is the opportune time to kill this guy. He jumped in Judas, sold him. When Judas, when Satan leaves him, jumps out of Judas. Judas says, what have I done? I betrayed innocent blood. So Judas wasn't a bad guy. It's just that the devil overpowered. Many people, listen to me closely. Many people who have, who have hurt me, have come against me. Demons jumped in them. Many people have betrayed me because of the depth of my calling. But it wasn't them. It was a demon that overpowered them and people who thought they were strong, it was found out that they were actually weak. To walk with <coughs> to walk with people, certain people who are deep in a dimension, you have to yourself have power and understand. Because there is an opportunity for you to betray the person who is close to God. <laughs> so realize this. You can't have everybody around you. This is why men of God need people who are going to really love them and pray for them. Really love them and honor them. Because at the same time, somebody will come close. Oh yeah, I'm your friend, this and that. Then you end up stabbing the person, trying to mess up everybody. Realize there's things that I carry that other people cannot do. And there's people, there's people that are set up as gifts of men. Understand me well. This is not even a man's teaching. This is God teaching you. That people are set up to be your the, the blessing in your life. How will you allow people to betray and destroy the person that has blessed you deeply? How do you allow that as people of God? You know how ignorant we are? No government does that. No, pe no people as rulerships does that. But you see the ignorance that Satan brings into the kingdom of God. That you'll allow the person that is blessing you. To just be betrayed and destroyed. And you even join in and betray them. Speak against them. Yeah, I know they prophesied to me. They blessed me. They prayed for me. Yeah, but oh well. well. I guess God's just exposing them now. I knew that they weren't. Okay. But they labored for you. They prayed for you. Cancer left you. Your child was sick. They got healed. They spoke that word. They... So, so realize this is the heart of many people. That's why many of us who are real re withdraw. I don't give people access anymore. There's no telling what you'll do because I know many people are just not strong. They're just not. Many people are not okay in themselves, in their heart. They're looking for something but they can't give what, what they're needing. <laughs> Realize to pour out to people you have to be strong. Nobody may fill you, may fill you up. It may be a small amount of people. But you yourself are filling people. This is real ministry from God. You have to be the person that pours. So I guess you better have deep access with God. <laughs> that you could receive the love from God first. And it doesn't matter who loves you or blesses you or whatever. I'm not losing sleep because somebody cusses me out or, or, or tries to curse me or hates me. I don't care. I wake up, destroy it. <laughs> I'll move on with my day. Some of you will come online. Oh, people hate me. I'll give up. Don't give up. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> Just do what you're called to do from Jesus. You go to the marketplace. They rejected God. Everyone. <laughs> Everyone rejected God. Who cares? At least you spoke the message. The seed will grow something later. Whether they accept you or they don't, it doesn't really matter. It just matters. God told you to do it. You did it. There it is. God loves you. That's all that matters. Oh, my family members hate me. Good. You're you're in the club too. I'm in, I'm I've been in the club for long. <laughs> my own mom signed her, her name against me to give me to Jezebel at a young age. <laughs> my own stepfather, ah, witchcraft since two. I'm 30. 
I've been hearing, listen, the depth of the witchcraft in the house, I've been hearing demons tell me what they were going to do to me since the age of six. I didn't start hearing last, last week, okay? <laughs> I've been hearing my whole life. <laughs> I've been seeing visions since nine. The suffering that has come with, people will hate you because demons will be in them. People are not strong. <laughs> They'll be used quickly like puppets. And until you go through that molding, hey, you won't be able to stand for yourself or people. I'm just being honest. <laughs> you won't. So it's good that people go to Bible college. It's good that they do these things. But I'm telling you, it, it, they become wicked shepherds. If you're propping yourself up to look some type of way in front of people. You become a wicked shepherd when you don't know what you're supposed to be doing and you do it in vagueness. You may become a false prophet. But as for some of us who have been molded for long, Satan wants to hide us. He wants people to be offended with us. He doesn't want you to know the truth. Atara, you spoke a, 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 a lesson. I went on a rant, a spiritual rant. You said it's never been about us. Sure, but don't leave me out if God has called me. He said that he gives gifts to men. <laughs> Understand that. He gives gifts to men. Some of us, he's taken our whole life that we're inseparable with God. I can't leave God if I wanted to. I'm his bond servant. <laughs> There's no way to leave him. <laughs> There's no way to escape him. <laughs> so realize if you're talking God, I'm part of God. <laughs> to the point he's not offended if I say, I bring you the presence now. <laughs> You'll really feel it. You'll experience it. Atar, you spoke, a, you, spoke, you spoke something. Listen. The way you purify your mind is, is you engage the Holy Spirit. You have to pray intently and take his word by face value. So you need to ask him according to Ephesians 4.23. Ephesians 4.23 says this. It says, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. People are making it to be something that you can do. Yet you can't do it. But you can position yourself that God will do it. All of his word, realize God had put commandments to men. God put commandments to men. So understand, you can't do it. <laughs> That's the reason why he, he was trying to humble us. So that when the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ had appeared, now you would lean, learn to him, lean to him and say, wait, everything you're commanding me to do, I must do it through you. And that's the reason why Jesus gives his own spirit to us. You have to do it through him, then you'll, you'll never fail. If you live your entire life through Jesus Christ, you'll succeed in every way. And your mind will, you'll receive the mind of Christ. And that's the place where you really start to hear from God. When your thoughts are aligned with how God thinks. Thank God that God doesn't think how we think. <laughs> but don't, but realize, don't stay in, in a preacher's mindset. Many preachers will preach that, but then you look and investigate their life. You speak to them, and they'll just, you're carnal. You're still mean. And you can't do anything for me. But understand this. Be somebody that understands intently that when you're really renewed according to the mind, when I see people's uh, misfortunes, when I see their situations, I'm not judging you according to the visions and what I'm seeing into your life. I'm judging the demons. And I'm telling you very well, listen, you need to listen because this and this is going to happen. That way, if we go in this way, you will be blessed. So when you have the thoughts of God, I never count anybody out and I never judge them according to what I see them doing or what they've gone through. You can't come close to God if you're judging people in that way. You're thinking you're better than, no, I felt pain. Ah, you'd be offended for me if I told you some of my scars. But understand, if you haven't endured yourself, you'll judge people. That's why many prophets are not deep. I'm just being honest. Many prophets are doing the wrong thing. For, for people to even to, to hear you speak, like I, I know that if people would stop typing so fast and they would come and listen to me actually speak, there'd be no way you could call me fake. There's literally nothing that I'm trying to manipulate or do for people. I'm, I'm pouring myself out so that people will be blessed. <laughs> there's, there's literally no benefit for me. <laughs> 
except that I'm fulfilled by blessing others. There's nothing else that I need. I literally make too much money for even people to pull up an offering. I'm just being honest. I make too much money now. It's like at one time I did need and it's not bad to be in a place of need, but thank God I don't need because people are stingy. That even I, listen, I gave, I gave 10K. I gave $10,000 to my spiritual father because I knew what was in him to provoke God to bless me even more. And that's what I owed. Some of you don't realize that what you had received will lift off of you because you're loaning it from God. It was a loan. That that dimension of God taking you deeper. He says, that, he says that that's why you don't give tithes. And you don't give tithes, you're robbing God. No, no. I went to work and I worked for it. God said, you use my breath and my energy to go get it. You're robbing me. You come, you get blessed, and you leave. You don't give anything. You're robbing me. <laughs> I really give. Me. <laughs> I'm not telling you to do something I don't do. And the people who have increased and have been giving, I want to advise you because you've really increased, you guys. Giving. Hallelujah. Listen, if you're going to give to me, pray over it first. Pray over whatever you need. Pray over whatever you need. That's when you'll see it come to pass. They say, Lord, consume this. This thing that is bothering me, this demon that's fighting me, I lay it on the altar. I give it to the man of God. When my grace touches it and my spirit's provoked and I pray for you, it, it will work and you'll receive grace. Whatever you want. This is how spiritual things really work. He takes the thing that you love. He said, Abraham, you love this son. You love this son. <laughs> okay, lay this son on the altar and kill him. Give him to me. Sacrifice. What? <laughs> some of you, some of you love money too much. Ah, dude, ooh, no, 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 no. He says, okay, give it. And it's supposed to be hard. Oh, I just got this much. Give it. Watch God increase you later. It'll be hard at the time. I'm not saying give past when you're when you need to eat eat use wisdom <laughs> i'm not saying give your rent out and then now you're homeless that's not what i'm saying what i'm saying is give what you can <laughs> and increase your so one of the things god is working on me if i could be transparent i'm stretching my giving i'm stretching my giving so that it's not binding me and god can give me more you say give to the poor mostly when i can but realize, giving to the poor is your charity. That's not that's not necessarily um, that's not necessarily a sacrifice. That's your charity. If that makes sense. A sacrifice is giving somewhere that they don't even need it, but they carry a higher grace than you. This is the real man of God that comes to teach you the word and blesses you. That you lay something on the altar, and when you give to somebody who doesn't need it, God comes into your situation. I don't know if you're hearing me. <laughs> you want it? You say you wanted to give, you don't have cash app, couldn't find a website. I don't have a website. I have PayPal. PayPal me. PayPal.me at uh, slash assembly of profits. Joseph said, hey, question when you get a chance, is Prophet Lobi real? He's very real. He's for real. He's for real. Well said fruitful, fruitful grounds. Exactly. We say I get a pension in SSI. I'm blessed. I need to find a house in Eastern Washington. Okay. Amen. <clears throat> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I should probably plug this up before you guys lose me. I'm going to lean back a little bit. So when am I coming to Tennessee? You know, I don't stay around too, too much. But you'll have to visit me when I get established. It's coming. Don't worry. I'm not working all these hours for for nothing. I, I come through Tennessee a lot. To come to D.C. I was in D.C. last week. I don't know if you hear me. Yeah, I was in I was in DC last week. Hallelujah. I'm in Tennessee. I was in Tennessee maybe two weeks ago. I just move around a lot. Hallelujah. 
I hope somebody was blessed by this. I hope somebody was blessed. Uh, it looks like we only get connection over here. Crystal said, I'm believing the Lord for spiritual growth and increase over my life. Alexandria said, thank you, Chris. Love it. Blessed. Amen. Listen, some, some of you just need to attach. We need to start fasting together. We'll fast and pray together. Because some of you I know want to really grow and hear, hear the voice of God. Some of, some of you really want to grow and do I do dream interpretation? I can. I can do it, but I don't. <laughs> I don't really like to do it <laughs> too much. Uh, dreams are very personal, you know coded language but when the Holy Spirit tells me you know he tells me that's what that was one of the first things I, I started doing when I started you know prophesying to people publicly I started in dream dream interpretation hallelujah hallelujah I'm feeling like we should do prophetic service soon where we just prophesy we just speak the word um You say you've given to the prophets of Yahweh and was given prophecy of a million dollars. Amen. So you might, anybody who is, listen, <laughs> listen to me. Some of us need to become millionaires. I'm just being honest. Some of us, it's not, it's a small thing to even become a millionaire. Because of the work of the kingdom, we need it. We need people to become that. Some people are offended, will never, will never touch it. But people with the right hearts. But people with the right hearts will touch it. Okay, this, this connection is deceiving.